Welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video on divisibility. My name is Professor Michael Polk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, participants should be able to state the definitions for integer divisibility, primes, and composite numbers, and they should be able to make conjectures about divisibility and prove it by definition unwinding or by providing a counterexample. We'll start off with the definitions for divisibility. So if d and n are two integers, we say that d divides n if there is an integer k such that n is equal to d times k. So this is a very common definition that's used throughout math and used throughout number theory. Um, we say that d divides n, or you can say that d is a divisor of n, or you can say that n is a multiple of d. All of those are the same thing. There are different words for the same thing. And if you want to represent it, you can represent it as uh, d bar n, so that d goes into n. So let's start off with some examples of these. 3 divides 12, since 12 can be written as 3 times something, where that something is an integer. In particular, it's 3 times 4. 5 divides minus 30, since minus 30 is 5 times minus 6. And you can check for yourself that a is even if and only if 2 divides a. You should actually try to prove this. What are some non-examples? So we use this dash bar to mean does not divide. So in particular, 12 does not divide 3. Since if you try to write 3 is equal to 12 times something, that something won't be an integer ever. Similarly, 5 is not a multiple of 10. One thing that's easy to do is to confuse the order of these things. Um, we know that 5 is not a multiple of 10, but 10 is a multiple of 5. So you can have a stockpile of examples to help yourself remember how the order goes. Now our goal is to discover what is true about divisibility. Um, we're going to come up with uh, guesses or conjectures for what we think is true about divisibility. And so far, all we have is the definition of divisibility, and we have a small number of examples that I made. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to play around. Create five examples and five non-examples of divisibility. So come up with some examples of things that are divisible and some things that aren't divisible, pairs. Take a moment right now, pause the video, and come up with this, these examples. Once you've done that, once you've played around a bit, the next thing to do is to actually make conjectures. So make a conjecture or a guess as to how you think divisibility works for all integers. We start by gathering data by playing, and then our conjecture is going to capture the general patterns, the things that we think are true for all integers. Once you've made your conjecture, you should try to break it uh, by finding integers that make your conjecture false. So in trying to find things that are true about all integers, you might be a bit too optimistic. So one thing you should do once you make a guess is to see where the cracks are in it and see if you can break your conjecture, um, see what is actually true. If you do manage to break your conjecture, that's okay. You should modify it. So go back, gather more data, play around a bit, make another conjecture, and then test it again as needed. And every time you break it um, and fix your conjecture, um, it'll become stronger and stronger, and you'll have a better and better theorem. Now, once you've done that for a while, you've, you've gone through this procedure of making conjectures, breaking them, make, make, strengthening them and breaking them, uh, then you this isn't quite enough to, to, to believe that your conjecture is true. This gives you some evidence, but this is not good enough in mathematics. So in math, we have to produce a, a proof. We have to explain why it is actually true for everything, not just why it's likely. For us right now, we're going to use definition unwinding to prove our conjectures. As the course progresses, um, we'll see other examples of proof techniques, but for now, we'll use definition unwinding. We're gonna look at two examples. The first example is uh, this conjecture. So after playing around a bit, you notice a pattern and you make a conjecture. Um, 
Now, before I continue, you might think that this is artificial and that I'm making you seem like a mathematician when you aren't, but for example, on tests or assignments, this is what you'll be doing. You'll come up with guesses, you'll, you'll think, you'll say, I think this part is true, and you'll write it down. And so this should give you a, a way to test whether or not the conjectures you made are actually true. So let's say you've come up with this conjecture. For any three integers a, b, and n, if a divides n and b divides n, then a plus b divides n. So you've come up with that after looking at some data, after playing around. Now you should attempt to break your conjecture. So you can uh, come up with some examples that you think might break this, or you might give it to a friend and say, I want you to, to try to find examples where this breaks down. After playing around for a bit, you might come up with the following example. 1 divides 4 and 2 divides 4, but 3, their sum, does not divide 4. What happens now is that you've broken your conjecture. The conjecture is not true. So you should attempt to modify it somehow. There are many ways to modify it, um, just like there are many things that are true about integers and divisibility. Here's one way that I might modify it. I might modify it by saying if d, a, and b are integers, and d divides a and d divides b, then d divides the sum. So instead of adding the divisors, I've added the things they divide. You can actually check that this is true by definition of unwinding. Let's look at another example. So you might have come up with the following conjecture uh, after doing a bunch of uh, examples. If a and b are integers, and a divides b, and b divides a, then a is equal to b. So you might have noticed that as you pro progressed, as you, as you did a bunch of examples. And you looked for counterexamples, you spent 10 minutes looking for counterexamples, couldn't find any, and now you think that this might actually be true. So let's start our proof and see where we get stuck, or we'll, we'll see a complete proof of it. We're going to use definition unwinding. So our first line is to write down all of our assumptions. We're supposing that a and b are integers and that a divides b and b divides a. What does this mean? Well, the definition for a divides b and b divides a is this. There are integers such that b is a times something and a is b times something. So that's, that's just from the definition of divisibility. Now our goal is to prove that a is equal to b, and it's not so clear what we actually do, but we have these two equations, let's mash them together and see what happens. So replacing the a in the b equals a k, this gives us b is equal to b times m k. So we plugged one equation into the other. So then 1 is equal to mk by canceling the b's. This is actually a little bit of a lie. Um, something would go wrong if b was equal to 0. But if b is equal to 0, uh, then you're, you'll, you can check that a has to actually be equal to 0. So for the moment, let's assume that b isn't 0. After canceling the b's from both sides, we get that 1 is equal to m times k. So now, what happens? What are the integers that when you multiply them together, you get one? Well, one option is that both of them are one. So if m and k are both one, we can look back to our definition over here, b is equal to a times k, that would give us b equals a. And m equals one would also give us a equals b. So in the case that m, m and k are both one, we actually get that a is equal to b. So it seems like we've proved our conjecture, right? Well, we have to be a little bit careful. Is this the only option for m and k? Can you think of another pair of integers m and k that multiply to one? The other pair that do it are both of them equal to minus one. 
And now if both of them are equal to minus 1, what happens to a and b? How do they relate to each other? Well, a is going to be the negative of b. So how do we modify our conjecture? Well, going back to our conjecture, if a and b are integers and a divides b and b divides a, then it's not always the case that they're equal, but sometimes one might be the negative of the other. So let's fix our conjecture. There we go. And now we have a beautiful conjecture, which is actually a theorem now, and this proof is complete. Before we finish, let's reflect. What are the main steps in making and proving a conjecture? Do these steps apply only to divisibility, or can you apply these steps to other definitions, other concepts? Is it okay to make false conjectures? And finally, what is the role of play and creativity in math? Thank you very much, and I hope you have a good day.